Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series on racist bullshit from TV and film, with some inspiration by this scene from Marvel's The Defenders. More importantly, it's a secret I keep, not just for the sake of protecting myself, but also for the people that I love. Okay, I get that. I, I promise you, you cannot fight these people, not even with whatever it is your hand can do. It's cheap. It's not. What I'm saying is, going at them head on, that'll get you killed. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna brush right past all of this whitewashing bullshit with this whole franchise by mentioning that if you want to tell Chinese and or Pan-Asian stories then, and I don't know how else to make this more simple, you also need to have Asian people in those stories. That's, like, reasonable, right? Anyway, moving on, I thought this scene would also be an excellent opportunity to point out what some folks likely may not have noticed, but the vast majority of the time that you see Chinese food on screen, it's pretty much always represented by the same handful of dishes. These are going in order, the veggie lo mein, fried rice, general sao's chicken, and of course, the steamed dumplings. I have no earthly idea why these dishes come up so often. I'm guessing it's probably because they look really iconic, I guess. But either way, the reason that I picked this particular scene is because if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice the dish that Luke Cage is eating is actually not one of those four, but instead is one of my favorite stir fries of all time, which is a broccoli beef stir fry. Now, for those who are not familiar, a broccoli beef stir-fry is an entirely American creation and is one of the more popular dishes that you'll come across in Chinese takeout spots throughout the States. It features a tender seared steak, flash-cooked crispy broccoli, and a savory sauce base that heavily relies on the use of the Big Three dark soy sauce, black vinegar, and oyster sauce. We'll also be using this one as an opportunity to explore the use of baking soda and cornstarch, which is going to help us science our way into the most tender piece of steak that I have ever created. So, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm kicking things off with some top cut Angus sirloin steak here, which I'm going with mainly because I can't for the life of me find flank steak at the market lately. I'm slicing this thinly against the grain as much as possible to help keep this stuff nice and tender. Then in a separate bowl is our secret ingredient of the day courtesy of Cook's Illustrated. Half a teaspoon of baking soda dissolved in a quarter cup of water. I'm adding this baking soda slurry to my steak and giving it a thorough toss to coat. Now, I'm no food scientist, so I won't go into too much detail here, but from what I understand, the baking soda is gonna make it harder for the proteins in our steak to bond as they sear, resulting in a more tender piece of meat, or so I've read, at least. However, as any baker will also tell you, unactivated baking soda left behind in a dish also has a very metallic taste to it, too. So, I'm letting this soak for 30 minutes, then being careful to remember to also drain off this liquid left behind so it doesn't end up in our stir fry. Then for our marinade, this is 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of white pepper, and finally half a teaspoon of cornstarch to protect the exterior of our steak from turning rubbery in our sear. We're tossing all of this to combine, then letting it marinate for another 30 minutes while we get to work on our veggies. All right, diving into our veggies, I'm starting off as with most of our recipes with four cloves of crushed and minced garlic, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of finely minced ginger. Then next up is my aforementioned broccoli. I'm taking a page out of our Pad CU recipe and chopping them into long, thin spears to keep these in manageable bites. Now, most recipes will also call for broccoli to have some form of par cook, like a steam or a blanch to help them tenderize. In our case today though, I actually want our broccoli to retain a bit of crunch and bite, so they're going straight into our wok fry raw. In order to make sure that they cook through properly though, we do need them to be sliced thinly, so pay attention to this bit. We're rinsing these down and making sure they're thoroughly dried off, then moving on to our sauce. I'm starting things off here with another 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, followed by 1 tablespoon each of Shaoxing wine and sesame oil. 
Then next up are three ingredients that you'll likely recognize from a lot of the darker, more rich stir fries that we've done, like pad siyu, pad kimao, beef chow fun, lion's head meatballs, and a few others. This is two tablespoons each of dark soy sauce, black vinegar, and oyster sauce. Then I'm rounding all of this out with our heat elements of the day. This is one tablespoon of doubanjang and two tablespoons of fried chili crisp oil or lao gan ma, plus a pinch of kosher salt to taste. Lastly, in a separate bowl, I'm combining two tablespoons of cornstarch in water for our cornstarch slurry, and we're heading over to the stove. Okay, so over on the stove, I've got my wok heating up as hot as possible. Then I'm adding four tablespoons of peanut oil, and as always, long yao for your non-stick surface. Then we're starting off with my Angus steak here first, which should be both tenderized and marinated by this point. I'm adding this a piece at a time, flat side down, and searing undisturbed for two and a half minutes before turning and tossing. Then I'm wiping down my wok and repeating with my remaining stick. Mine took three batches altogether. Also, quick respect for this sweet wok flame that almost set my camera on fire. Whoops. Then finally, on our last batch, I'm borrowing from some French cooking technique and reserving this fond left behind, which is made up of all kinds of bits and pieces of steak fat and deliciousness. Then I'm deglazing my wok with half a cup of stock, followed by my sauce mixture and our cornstarch slurry. Now, very important to note, I'm only reserving the fond from the last batch, otherwise that fond is just going to turn into burnt stuff. Not so great. Next, I'm removing my sauce mixture, wiping down and reheating my wok, adding another four tablespoons of peanut oil and giving it one more long yao for our veggies. I'm starting off with my broccoli first with a two minute head start since it has not been par cooked. We're gonna saute this until it's just past its raw stage, then shifting everything to one side, adding one more tablespoon of peanut oil, followed by my garlic and ginger. I'm blooming these for their aromatic qualities in the hot oil for about 10 seconds until fragrant before tossing everything to combine, then followed by my beef, sauce mixture, and a little bit of water to loosen things up if your sauce is looking a little tight like mine is. I'm giving this one more toss to combine, finishing with some sesame seeds, and we're ready to eat. So, as some of you may have guessed at this point, I love using raw broccoli and stir fries because I think that their super sturdy quality just pairs really well with aggressive wok heat. As long as they're chopped properly, they have an ability to stay super crunchy and crispy while still cooked through in a way that can get a little bit temperamental with other common wok veggies like bell pepper or onion. Then in contrast to that, the baking soda trick worked wonders with our Angus steak today, and it just helped us create a piece of beef that was somehow crispy, seared, and incredibly tender, and if I didn't know better, I would have thought that I was biting into a piece of prime rib because it actually is that tender. Science is fucking crazy, am I right? Then lastly, this is actually the first time that I have tried to reserve fond in a wok fry because it's not really a technique that you see in Chinese cooking too often. But I actually thought that it worked out really great and just helped us create a super flavorful and rich sauce element thanks to all of that fat that we rendered in our sear. I honestly don't know why this isn't more common in wok frying, but I'll probably start doing it more often though. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. This is one of the stir fries that my dad used to throw together a lot when I was a kid, probably because it's a pretty easy one to knock out in 20 minutes, but also because you'll likely be able to use it to trick picky eaters into eating a whole bunch of vegetables since they're covered in steak juice. Let me know if you give this one a shot. It's always super fun to hear from folks who try the recipes, or if you want, you can absolutely just keep binge watching these videos because there's a lot of them. Now. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, do some internetting, and I'll see you soon. Like be the baby And you're dying if you think that you don't know oh. Never mind I thought you still don't love yourself no. And you can find it from somebody else no. Whoa.